In this video, we're going to talk about bending stress, and the equation for bending stress is sigma equals mc over i, <clears throat> where uh, sigma is your bending stress, or uh, just uh, general stress, but in this case we're talking about bending stress. M is your moment. <clears throat> C is the distance from your neutral axis, and we'll talk about that, to the furthest face. We'll talk about that too. And I is the area moment of inertia, which is covered in another video. So let's talk about uh, bending and the neutral axis. Let's say that we've got a, uh, a cantilevered beam like this, and it's fixed on the left side, <clears throat> and we're going to apply a load like this at the end. Now when we apply that load, this beam is going to deflect something like that. And what's going to happen is on the bottom, so down in this area, <clears throat> the material is going to be under compression, right? If you think about that, like uh, think about the uh, the different molecules on this beam that, that are down here in the, in the bottom they're going to get compressed together, so they're going to be under compression. And then think about the molecules on the top up here. Are they going to be in compression also? No, they're going to be in tension. They're going to be pulled apart just slightly on the top. <clears throat> now there's going to be what's called a neutral axis, which I'm going to draw in green right here. And the neutral axis is the axis that that is not compressed or pulled in tension at all. In other words, that there's no, um, there's no like stress, no, no compression or no uh, tension on it. It's just, um, uh, these molecules essentially see the same thing as they do in the unbended or the, the straight state. <clears throat> so that's the neutral axis in green. Neutral axis. So we said that uh, C is the distance from the neutral axis to the furthest face. Uh, <clears throat> so the furthest face here is going to be um, the distance, so the, the neutral axis up to um, all, all the way up to this face. So like that. Now we could also say uh, it could be down to this face, in which case we'd be looking at this dimension here. And, but it's the same, right? <clears throat> because our neutral axis, at least for, let, let's say this is, I don't know, either a square profile or a circular profile. We're just going to look at these two simple basic profiles. For either one, the neutral axis is going to be right in the center. And so the distance from the neutral axis to the furthest face is going to be the same, right? Whether we go from the neutral axis to the top or to the bottom, that distance is the same. Same thing for a square or rectangle. Neutral axis to the top and to the bottom is the same. <clears throat> so that that's uh, that's what C is. All right. So if we're going to calculate the, the bending stress in something, what we would do is, <clears throat> oh, I guess to back up for just a moment, uh, why would you want to calculate the bending stress in something? Well, typically you want to calculate the bending stress in order to determine whether or not this part is going to fail or. Uh, in my mind, failing and, and plastically deforming are, are almost synonymous because if something has plastically deformed, it, it's a good bet that it's no, no longer usable in its intended state. And so as far as I'm concerned, it has failed. So we, we want to calculate our bending stress so that we can compare it against that material's yield stress and determine whether or not the uh, the material will plastically deform. And we've talked about in other videos that <clears throat> yield stress is a material property. It is shape independent. So <clears throat> regardless of whether our cross section is circular or uh, rectangular or some other shape, um, <clears throat> the, the yield stress is going to be con uh, uh, constant. So let, let's say that we're dealing with, um, I don't know, a, a bar of aluminum here. And our yield strength is, um, uh, we, we just looked at it in, in another video, but it was 39,000 PSI or 39 KSI. Same thing. <clears throat> okay, so we know, uh, we know what our, our um, yield strength is. So determine, uh, in order to determine whether or not this, uh, this cantilever beam is going to fail, 
we would need to calculate the uh, the bending stress sigma and compare it against our yield strength uh, if the bending stress is higher than the yield strength then we know that we will have plastic deformation and that's bad and if the bending stress is strength stress uh, the bending stress is less than 39 ksi then we know that we will not have plastic deformation will be within that elastic deformation region and uh, we know that we're we're not going to have any plastic deformation so that's good <clears throat> so what when would you use this maybe let's talk about that um, there are a lot of different situations where you would use this it's impossible to cover all of them but in uh, <clears throat> in the I think the material lesson we looked at a, a battery cover for a, a, a Wii remote controller and I'm just gonna kind of crudely sketch in like kind of a cross section here so the the remote control itself if kind of look at look at like an outline of the cross section I don't know, it looks something like, like that. And then over here at this end, we've got this like little, <clears throat> uh, it looks something like that anyway. Um, and, and, and this region that I'm going to circle in blue here, that region bends. Uh, and it bends in order <clears throat> to, uh, to, to move this little tab in and out. And that tab engages with uh, an undercut feature in the remote control itself <clears throat> and either uh, locks the cover in or or disengages the cover from from the remote <clears throat> so this bending I, I'm going to simplify it a little bit and let's see if, if I just draw this part here circled in red right that's going to look something like that and then there's that little tab in there as well and then I'm, I'm going to take that whole thing and rotate it 90 degrees just so it's a um, little bit easier to look at in terms of what we've kind of drawn before as far as cantilever beam. So it looks kind of like this. Now let's say that we're, we're going to fix this end right here. And we're going to apply a load right here. Well, now it looks a lot like our cantilever beam up above, right? <clears throat> and so this is a situation where you could, you know, kind of approximate the bending stress in that... Um, in that feature so that when when a user kind of like grabs it with their fingertip and, and pulls it in and deflects that that feature we could deflect we could calculate what the deflection is and what the bending strength will be I'm sorry what the bending stress will be and then we could compare that bending stress against the yield strength of the plastic that was used to mold the part and we'd have a pretty good idea you know is this feature going to plastically deform or is it not and that's that's you know a pretty practical example of how you might use this equation so um, we'll, we'll, we'll kind of go through this quickly um, uh, you know putting numbers to it uh, I, I guess it's useful, but but really the equation is what's really useful. But we'll, we'll put some numbers to it just, I guess, to be thorough here. So uh, we'll, <clears throat> going back to this example, we've got a cantilevered beam. You know, it's doing whatever it's doing. <clears throat> and we know that the yield strength of, uh, let's say that this beam is, is aluminum. It's 6061 T6 aluminum um, and has a, a yield strength of 39,000 PSI. So we're going to apply some load to it. Let's say that we're applying, I don't know, 500 pounds. 500 pounds right here. And let's say that this distance right there is, oh, let's say it's 5 feet. And then our uh, area moment of... Um, of inertia, why don't we say that is, <clears throat> what do we want to say that is? Um, we'll just kind of make up a number here, point, uh, hold on here, let me look at something. Area moment of inertia, let's say that's uh, 5e to the negative 10. Um, and, and the area moment of inertia is something that we would calculate, but um, <clears throat> uh, this, this video, purpose of this video is not really to calculate moment of inertia. We've done that previously in another video. So we're just going to say that it's 5 times 10 to the negative 10 or 5e to the negative 10. Just a, a, a short, shorter way of saying, um, you know, take 5 and, and move the decimal places 
move the decimal place 10 times to the left. So, you know, for, we're starting with 5 here. We go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And then our decimal place is there. We've got, you know, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 5. That's, that's what that means. 5 e to the negative 10 or 5 times 10 to the negative 10. <coughs> All right, so that's our i. <coughs> so uh, let's see. Uh, sigma equals mc over i. I guess we need to know c. And to know c, we need to know how tall this is. Let's just say that um, this is a, uh, I don't know, let, let's say that it, it's a circular cross section. Okay, we've got a circular cross section. And let's say that our diameter, this diameter equals, um, how about, 2 inches. So c is, um, <clears throat> for a, a circle, c is your uh, diameter divided by 2. If it was a square, c would be your height time or height divided by 2. You know, it's just the distance from that neutral axis, which is going to be in the center for a circle or a square, uh, uh, to the, the, the furthest face. So um, d divided by 2 or h, your height divided by 2 for a square. So we're saying circle. So let's put some numbers in here. Uh, the moment <coughs> is going to be five feet uh, times 500 pounds force and the uh, and then C is going to be uh, let's give ourselves a little bit more room so it equals 5 feet times 500 pounds force and then C is uh, 2 2 inches divided by 2 is just 1 inch and let's turn feet into inches as well. So 5 feet is 60 inches. So we've got 60 on, and then divided by I. So we've got uh, 60 inches times 500 foot-pounds uh, times 1 inch divided by <coughs> um, 5e to the negative 10 and so let's see let's do some math there 60 times 500 so 60 times 500 equals 30,000 <coughs> so that's e equals uh, 30,000 is uh, 3 e to the fourth over 5 e to the negative 10. So we're going to be left with 3 over 5 e to the negative 6. It's going to be a very, very small number. Um, you know, it's going to be 0. 0.0000, you know, something, <coughs> which is much, much less than 39,000 KSI. So, you know, maybe we've, maybe our, our i is inaccurate. Um, Let's see. <clears throat> let's see. Let's well, if we have a, a diameter of two, all right. We're just going to get into this then. Um, our our moment of inertia is pi d to the fourth over sixty four. So let's see. Equals um, pi times. 2 to the fourth over 64 equals, <coughs> uh, let's see, 3.14 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 equals that divided by 64 equals 0.75 equals 0 0.785. So my, <laughs> I don't know where I came up with this I value. It's way, uh, Way less than what it actually is. So let's do this again then. Um, we're gonna, we're gonna scroll down a little bit. Uh, let's see, sigma equals mc over i, which equals, uh, we said s five feet times six, uh, five feet times 500 pounds, but five feet is 60 inches. We're gonna keep this in inches, so it equals 60 inches times 500 pounds times we already determined that c is 1 divided by 0 0.785 0 0.785 equals 
Let's see what that equals. So 60 times 500 equals that divided by 0 0.785 equals 38,217. 38,217, and that's going to be PSI. And we uh, said before that our yield strength is 39,000 pounds uh, PSI. So it looks like uh, our <coughs> bending stress is just barely less than our um, than our yield strength, which I didn't plan, but that's how it worked out. So, so we're good. We're good, just barely. We're pretty close to plastic deformation, but but not quite there. Still within the um, uh, the safe region, uh, and that's how you calculate bending stress. If you found this content helpful, consider enrolling in our signature program at mypipelineacademy.com. Whether you're an individual interested in beginning a new career as a mechanical designer or a company interested in training your new engineering hires, our signature program helps students develop the practical skills they need to be productive mechanical design engineers. Seating is limited. We hope to see you there soon.